Good morning, round two for the other video. I uh, just want to go ahead and get started for our Palm Sunday service. Uh, I have been crafty today. I have created a, uh, a whole lot of palms all lashed together, so hopefully this will not fall apart on me. If you have your palms that were mailed to you, St. Philip's, then uh, go ahead and get those ready. We're going to do what's called the Liturgy of the Palm. So a couple announcements uh, before we get started. Um, everything you need is in the bulletin that's been attached. It's a different type of bulletin than we are used to. Um, so what's going to happen actually is there's going to be what's called the Liturgy of the Palms that starts. And that's like a bit of a preamble to uh, the actual rest of the service uh, that happens. So why do we do the Liturgy of the Palms? Essentially what's happening is a couple of things. Uh, part one is we are expressing and we're remembering a kingly procession of Jesus on Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, the start of Holy Week. That's why we're doing this whole processional. Uh, we know that um, the word Hosanna is used by people to proclaim um, Jesus is Hosanna, the son of David. Hosanna literally means save us. So this type of kingly procession is a way of crying out to Jesus, saying, save us, help us, you are king, we love you, we need you. And so as we are in a particularly trying time right now, I think it's appropriate that we will continue to use this way of shouting out to God of, Hosanna, son of David, save us, we need you, we love you, and you are king. And practically, What's going to happen is I'll say a couple of uh, prayers to begin with. Um, I will read the triumphal entry, and then I'll say something the deacon or the celebrant says at the end. I'll say, let us go forth in the name of Christ. And um, what will happen is we'll actually process. Uh, we'll have, usually it's a big old, like, raucous, you know, uh, party processing, but we'll actually take it a little more somber this year. We'll have a silent procession. We'll process halfway down. Uh, the aisle, and then we'll pause. I'll read another collect, and then we'll go right into the rest of the service. So that's part one, Liturgy of the Palms. And it's kind of cool, kind of different, and this year, obviously, everything is very different. Um, the second part that's going to be different this week for y'all is we're actually, for the reading, instead of saying the Gospel Lord, I'm, I'm actually going to announce the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to read an extended version of the Passion Narrative. It is long, so feel free just to pop a squat, hang out. It is also in your bulletin. You're, you're welcome to follow along with that. Or if you just like to sit and receive that and just listen and contemplate what our Lord has gone through, then I encourage you to do that as well. Brittany and I will tag team that. She'll be acting as the narrator, and I'll be acting as all the other voices. <laughs> so hopefully it's not too confusing, but you can always follow along. So, you're going to see the Liturgy of the Palms, kind of different, coming at you, and you're going to also see the Passion Narrative read in total. And then I'll try and keep a, an abbreviated sermon, I'll try and keep it short, I promise. Um, eight minutes, time me on that, I hope I'm close. And um, I think that is everything that you will need to know that's different. It's in your bulletin, um, and then I will get to the announcements a bit later. So... Let's just take a quick minute, and if you haven't already procured your palm cross, you know what you can do? Just go cut a branch outside. Just go get a branch. Oh, blaze of grass. Hold them. This is a, this is a kingly procession, and, and we're welcoming Jesus. So feel free to grab whatever branch you want. If you want to, you can even start at your door. You can come to your front door. This is the, the front door of our church, and uh, we're at the front door. We're, we're ready to enter uh, together. Enough talking John. So let's begin. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God, of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts, whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So reading 
from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11, also known as the triumphal entry of our Lord into Jerusalem. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken to the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from, from Nazareth in Galilee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the, the highest. highest. Let us go forth in peace in the name of Christ Christ. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, whose dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. If you
you are not already seated, please be seated, seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from the letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who, through, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Is the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray Jesus to you? The, tr the priest paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment Judas began to look for the opportunity to, to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Jesus said, Go into the city of a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And the disciples became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl will, with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for the many of the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never... Again, drink of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to his disciples, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples when Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, Jesus threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to his disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, so, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, Jesus went away for a second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, Jesus came and found his disciples sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. 
So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for a third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given the crowd a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once Judas came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then the crowd came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on a sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. And Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted Jesus and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside. Peter sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so they might put him to death, but they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, the last two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to Jesus, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. And then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? The scribes and elders answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in Jesus' face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But Peter denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. Then Peter went out onto the porch. Another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly, you also are one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then Peter began to curse, and he swore with an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Then morning came. All the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. Judas said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But the chief priests and elders said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, Jesus, Judas departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests taking the pieces of silver, said, Is it not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money? After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field and place a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then, it was, then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, 
on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when Jesus was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But Jesus gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to the crowd, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For Pilate realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests and elders had handed Jesus over. While Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with the innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And the crowd said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then Pilate asked, Why? What evil has he done? But the crowd shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather be that, rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and our children. So Pilate re released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into governor, the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped Jesus and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him, mocking him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on Jesus and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put on his put his clothes, own clothes on him. They led him away to crucify him. As they went out, the soldiers came upon a man from Cyrene called Simon. They compelled this man to carry Jesus' cross, carry Jesus' cross. And when the soldiers came to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when, they taste, when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among them by casting lots. And they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over Jesus' head, they put a charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with Jesus, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking Jesus, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if God wants to. For this man said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with Jesus also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Which that is. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. 
The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. Joseph went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it be given to him. So Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and laid it in his own tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. Joseph then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that impositor said when he was still alive. He said, After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, Jesus' disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people. He has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing it with the stone. Pray with me. God, thank you for this day that we can know you as King who enters Jerusalem boldly, but also humbly. Help us to know who you are today and in this Holy Week. We pray that your Holy Spirit would inspire our hearts anew, that we might know your goodness and your love. Amen. Amen. As a child in elementary school, every year our school put on a spring play. Now, this was mandatory, and everyone hated it, <laughs> except for the parents, who every parent was there with a big old VHS camcorder catching every single terrible moment of the entire thing. The only redeeming factor is that we got to miss class, and we had to practice our little song and dance, and it really, it felt all very inconsequential and distant, right up until the moment that we were behind the curtain about to go on stage. The famous words rang out from our teachers, it's showtime. And then it all became very exciting for us. Well, friends, welcome again uh, to our service today of Palm Sunday. And we can officially say it, it is showtime. Welcome to Holy Week, where all the Lenten practice comes to a head. We wear uh, red, or what's also called ox blood, to remember the passion where our Lord is killed brutally. It seems especially penitent this year, doesn't it? I was reading on Facebook some of the posts that were floating around. Someone had said, uh, I hadn't planned on giving this much up for Lent. <laughs> As I mentioned at the very start of our service, I'm going to keep this short. And um, we've had our opportunity to get our Bible in. No one can say that we didn't get our Bible in today. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention a few things that we've got to notice about the triumphal entry in Matthew chapter 21. As I read this today, I wonder what your imagination of the scene is. What are you picturing in your mind as you think about Jesus entering into Jerusalem? What is your picture? 
I used to picture a ragtag group of like, I don't know, a hundred people who the disciples just kind of rounded up and put in a receiving line, not unlike like a basketball tunnel that someone might have coming into Jerusalem, a little rallying cry for an already small movement. I never paid too much attention to what the scripture was actually saying. So three things I want to draw our attention to. And they are all about other people besides Jesus. And that is, first, the crowd. Second, what they thought about Jesus. And third, the situation in Jerusalem. So first, verse 8, it says, A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them out on the road. The Bible, my friends, does not waste words. There are a lot of people here. Think like Disney World type crowds. Think like Times Square type crowds. And they are not social distancing. <laughs> they are here to celebrate. And they are here to party and make their pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. And what we see from here until the end of the gospel, a constant tension between who the Jewish crowds think Jesus is and who the Roman officials think Jesus is. Second, verse 9. The crowds went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. It is clear that some of the crowd think that Jesus is the Messiah, the chosen one, a king, the son of David, also a king. And they are celebrating that the king is returning to David's own city of Jerusalem. And they are crying out for him to save them. Again, Hosanna literally means save us. Hosanna is also a reference to Psalm 118. I encourage you to look it up. This is a psalm that pilgrims would sing as they came into Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. So to direct this type of acclamation from this psalm towards the person of Jesus is to proclaim that he is an authority figure, a king. Which brings me to the third point, verse 10. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? Another translation of the word for turmoil in Greek is agitated. The whole city is going nuts. It's like kicking a large, quiet anthill and like watching every ant swarm out, buzzing around, trying to figure out what is happening. Not to mention also, simultaneously there is Pilate and the Roman army occupying Jerusalem, which puts even more pressure on this scene. It's like a powder keg ready to blow. Jesus enters into a complete and total chaotic scene. And this crowd, friends, the crowd is fickle. They are so fickle. They will not be singing the same praise psalm in a matter of days. This is the crowd that on Palm Sunday says, Hail the King, and on Good Friday they say, Crucify Him. These are the people that have followed Him and worshipped Him, been healed by Him, taught by Him, and ultimately, they will abandon Him. And why? Why will they forsake Him in a matter of days? What is it? that Jesus offers, that agitates an entire city, that challenges the Roman Empire, and causes his best friends to leave him. He offers his very body, himself. And he says, if you follow me, you believe in me, and you worship me, then and only then will you know life. In the midst of this chaos, Jesus offers life in and through himself. Life eternal, 
forgiveness of sins, a new birth, a new life with God forever. In the midst of this complete chaos, Jesus offers his kingship, his godship, and his friendship. That's a lot of ships. Our world, too, is ramping up. It also might feel like we are in the midst of chaos. It seems like it's just getting crazier and crazier as this pandemic rages on. The crowds are getting agitated. The government is trying to help. And all the while, we're trying to figure out how to live and not get sick. And for those who are sick, how to continue to live and not die. And yet, the triumphal entry of Jesus was not limited to the chaos of one day, thousands of years ago. His triumphal entry is every day in the place where Jesus is king, which is everywhere. That means today and tomorrow and a year from now. Because our king is not afraid of turmoil or our restless crowds, he enters into our chaos and continues to offer himself, his very body, for everyone. As the light comes up on the holiest of weeks, we hear the words, it's showtime. Perhaps the refrain, Hosanna, son of David, has a new meaning for us. Save us, Jesus, from this time of trial and deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in your name. Hosanna, son of David, come be with us this week and forevermore. Amen. Prayers of the people, people are form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For Jack, Father Tom, Terry, the Kirkpatrick family, Ruth, Mariah, the Kapal family, the Maynard family, Larissa, Beth, Honda, Susan, Father Michael, Leslie, Bucky, Amy, Maggie, Addie, Haley, Frank, Esta, Sally, Toby, Paula, Mimi, Jim, Candace, Charlotte, Sherry, Yvonne, Zen, John, and thanksgiving for Terry. Now join me in the prayer for St. Philip's. Gracious and everlasting God, hear our prayer for this church family. Fill our hearts and minds with your vision for us. Let us be a house of prayer for all people 
With your help, we can heal the broken, reconcile the discontented, and celebrate with the joyful. Enable us, provide a place where all who come will hear your word and receive your holy sacraments. We pray that with your Holy Spirit to guide us, we are given the commitment and the zeal to bring it to pass. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I do want to take a moment to engage with any comments uh, and prayers that are on the live stream. Um, so if you do have any prayers that you would like uh, for us to uh, pray right now in this congregation here present and those who are home, um, please do um, extend those. I'll give us a minute to uh, gather those in the comment section. In the meantime, let me um, pray, God, we, we ask that you would be with all those on the front lines, those healthcare workers, those who are working tirelessly, who don't get to stay at home, who don't get to be protected in the same way as those who might be able to shelter in place. We pray, God, first of all, for all those who are sick, we pray for healing. For all those who are caring for them, we pray for protection and safety, endurance and stamina. We pray, God, that you would be in the midst of all of their lives right now, profoundly showing your face, your love, that you would continue to be God in this moment where we feel helpless and scared. When we feel and experience fear, would we turn to you in, in prayer and cry out to you and say, Hosanna, son of David, save us. We need you. We can't do this without you. We thank you for all those uh, also who are working in other essential businesses, um, such as grocery stores, food delivery services, all those who are helping us to stay nourished in this time. Um, we thank you for their enduring witness and work, and we pray, God, that you continue to inspire them and to give them the strength and, and patience and also just stamina in this time. I pray also, God, for all those who are lonely, um, those who are either so tired of family and are getting agitated or those who have no one and feel isolated. This polarization, God, we pray for that, that, yeah, would you um, heal the broken and the lonely and also give strength and endurance to those who are with family. I think of those who have children who have to continue to teach and care for them and to be parents in every way and also have full-time jobs. Pray that you'd be with them. Uh, we also pray... Um, let's see, I'm going to engage with the comments over here. Um, yes, thank you, Jill. We're going to continue to pray with you for all those who are in healthcare and the medical workers. Um, thanks, Linda. We'll pray for, pray for Richard and his recovery, um, from Susan. We pray for all who are caregivers and the souls of those who have died. Let light perpetual shine upon them, Lord. And the repose of Joe and George, their soul, God, would you continue to be with them and hold them within your everlasting embrace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, Thank you all again for being here. Um, being that the service is a little bit different, um, we're going to keep it moving. There actually isn't, if you've noticed, a, there isn't a creed or a confession of sin as we've been praising God the entire time and admitting that we need him. So with that being said, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet each other in the sign of peace, whether at an appropriate distance, elbow, heart, or peace sign. Oh man, it's still weird, still good to be here. Uh, we love you guys so much and we really miss you. Um, I, uh, a couple of things briefly. Um, I want to continue to thank those who have been cognizant of uh, their giving and um, who have been continued to tithe or be faithful in their giving to the church. We are so grateful for every gift. I've been thinking like sometimes people really enjoy um, giving their check in church, like in the offering plate. It's like a, like this is the thing, like this is my moment to give to the church. Um, if you are one of those people who likes to give weekly or, you know, you would like to like be a physical putter in the actual plate, 
<laughs> yes, that's not a real word. Uh, <laughs> um, what you can do right now in this moment is just like take your envelope with our little address on it and you can just like put a little stamp, um, put a little stamp um, right on it uh, in this moment. Um, just knowing that like everything we have is given to us from God is all a gift and, and we return um, all that we have as an offering. So thank you for all those who have been faithful. The roof is still going on the church. It looks good, slow and steady. A shout out to Ron Fouts who came and helped us uh, hook this internet up. Like, yay, um, it seems to be working uh, quite well and hopefully we'll continue to persist. Um, any other announcements? I have no other announcements. No other announcements. Okay. I'm sure there's something I'm forgetting, but we're going to keep pressing on. I know there's some birthdays. I think it's Sharon's birthday today. Um, we've got some anniversaries. I think we've got Betty and Bush's anniversary. Um, we've got lots of good things going on uh, today and this week. Um, who's that? Nico. Nico. Happy B day. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to pray the birthday anniversary prayer. All those who are celebrating any kind of anniversary, any kind of birthday, um, we just want to celebrate with you even from afar. Uh, so um, let's pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for these, your servants, on this their day. Watch over them as they begin another year, and give them the grace to keep the vows and promises they have made. Bless them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Raise them up if they fall. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. And may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide in their hearts all the days of their lives. Your Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We want to celebrate with you. So happy birthday and anniversary. And now, walk in love as Christ loved us, gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and pray. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world, 
In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the blessed Philip and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of salvation." By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ has died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory now and forever. Amen. 
The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you all again for joining us this morning. I, I pray this has been um, something that's been encouraging to you as we enter through Holy Week. Uh, please look to our Facebook page uh, for some explanation as to how St. Philip's is going to go about Holy Week. I will be posting uh, shortly, today or tomorrow, some instructions for how we might go through Holy Week together, uh, what we're doing for services, when they're going to be. So all the information is coming your way. Just check this page and be sure to check out our YouTube videos. I try and create some uh, content on our YouTube videos so that we can continue to supplement what we're reading and what we're doing in church with some individual prayer practices at home that we can all do together. So I pray that um, all these things are going to be comforting for you in this time. Know that we are we are, we are praying for you. We, um, we miss you. We love you. And uh, if there's anything you need, if there's anything we can do, please let us know. Um, I know it's challenging in this time when we can't actually be together, but know that... Um, from afar and in the quiet of our hearts and your homes, we are uh, praying for you. Uh, please take care, and we'll see you again shortly in this holiest of weeks.